this morning, and thanks to each of you for being here live. It's always great to have live people here in the Bell Chapel, and uh, also take this time to greet those who will be watching us virtually sometime later this week. We want to welcome you here on this first day of May, and we're looking forward to a good time today, so let's pray as we begin this time. Heavenly Father, for the blessings of this day, for the occasion of your people gathering in worship, we ask, Lord, that your name be lifted up, that we come looking to our maker and creator, our Lord and Savior, and Lord Jesus, we pray that you would suit a special blessing to each one present, those who are here, those who will join with us later. Lord, let this time of worship be pleasing to you, and let it strengthen your people. Let our faith grow, and let your name be exalted. Open our hearts now that we might receive this truth in this time together. And we ask that all glory and all honor go to you, the King of kings and Lord of lords. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Well, again, good morning and welcome. It's a blessing to have you here. And uh, we are going to sing a little bit. Yay. Be thou my vision. What's that number? 562. 562. We're going to stand together and sing. Jasmine's going to lead us. We'll do all four verses this morning. So let's stand and worship. this morning. In your bulletin, you will see this sheet. Um, if you'd be kind enough to fill that out and drop it in the offering plate, which is back there in the back, and you're looking around, there's not a pen in here at all, but I happen to have two with me this morning. So, you need one, Betty? I do. Okay. Thank you. First of all, that gives us a record of your attendance, and that's always something we cherish. More importantly, on the back, how can we pray for you? How can we minister to you and your family while you're here or away? Um, is this your first time to the chapel here? Yes. Wonderful. First time to Bell. Mm -hmm. First time no, to Bell. Well, I've been to Bell before. Okay. We have, we have a very diverse group. Um, we go from this to, in the summer, probably closer to 100. Wow. Christmas Eve, 600 people will fill this room, standing room only. Wow. Over 5,000 people go through the chapel on Christmas Eve here and in Beaver Creek as well. It's Beautiful. And then we have times where it's, you know, it's just home folks and, and friends. And 
we form great relationships. Prayer is one of those ways we can stay in contact. So as you feel comfortable when you're filling that out, if you'd like to get the email newsletter, please check that. You can get the email. It comes out where you do a sermon slide or where you can link on to them. But you also keep up with what's going on in town. If you choose to come back, you'll know a little bit about it. So um, that's a great way to uh, do that. So thank you for taking that time. Our scripture passage today is found in the book of Philippians. We are two weeks out from Easter. Two weeks ago was Easter. It seems like it was a month ago, uh, but it's only two weeks. The Mount, Bell Mountain does close today. Hallelujah. It's about time. And um, fortunately, there haven't been as many injuries this mud season as there typically are. Uh, maybe it's a little better conditions up there, but uh, as we get into mud season, we ebb and flow a little bit more. But two weeks out from Easter, where we had the grand celebration, we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. What a fabulous day. Ever since then, we still continue in that same act of worship because he is risen. We now have a different position. We talked about this last week from the book of Ephesians. We are now in Christ, and we have all heavenly blessings and our presence in Christ. I love the way that's written. This morning in Philippians, we're going to learn not a new position, but an attitude for life, thankful, thanksgiving, and prayerfulness. Here's God's word for his people. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day even until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this way about you since I have you in my heart for whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me, and God can testify how I long to be with you, filled with affection from Jesus Christ our Lord. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and in depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ's return, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ our Lord to the glory of and the praise of God the Father. I love that, that simple truth, and we're going to talk about that in just a little bit. Uh, before we do that, we are going to go to our Lord in prayer again. You'll see the Lord's Prayer printed for you, and we'll close this prayer time by saying the Lord's Prayer together. So bow with me as we approach the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, again, your people come before you, and we thank you for this day, our time together. And we pray that your people will experience the communion of saints and the fellowship of believers. That we will gain strength and encouragement from brothers and sisters today. And we pray that your people will be lifted up in this time of worship and that we will celebrate you as the risen Lord. And we will see the thankfulness and the prayerfulness that you teach us through your word. Let this time of worship Feed your people and let it strengthen our walks. And as we continue in worship this morning, we do pray for so many in our world who are hurting. We think of those who are going through times of war and depression. We think of those who are going through bouts of illness and physical difficulties. Lord, we lift our world to you and pray your blessings upon each one. Bring healing, bring peace and grace as only you can. We ask this morning that you also do a spiritual work. Restore us into the image of our maker. Refine us into your purity. Let this time be one that manifests in the lives of your people and draws us closer to you and that we reflect you more in this world. And as we thank you for those opportunities, we also pray for an openness of heart to receive your truth and for a willingness then to apply that truth and live in the attitude that you teach us. And now, Lord Jesus, let the voices of your people unite together and let us pray the way that you've taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, we are going to sing one more song now. Tell me that number again, Jasmine. Uh, number 42, thou faithful love of the Lord. Hymn number, hymn number 422, I love you with the love of the Lord. It's a one-verse chorus. We'll sing it through a couple of times. Let's stand again as we sing 422. And thanks for reading us, Jasmine. It's always good to hear God's people join together in song and prayer and uh, just to be in each other's presence. There's something powerful about that. So as we look into God's word this morning and we see this truth, an attitude of life filled with thankful thankfulness and prayerfulness. As I look at this passage, it's, it's kind of unique the way it's written in the Greek because as we start off in verse 3 there, the heading, I, think, I thank my God every time I remember you literally covers everything we're going to talk about this morning. And we could repeat that right before we say the next phrase because this is the part, I thank, I thank my God every time I remember you, and it goes, all my prayers for you, I always pray with joy because of our partnership. Then we could say, I thank my God every time I remember you, for it is right for us to feel that way. And I thank my God every time I remember you because this is our prayer for each other that we'll continue in love. So, Thankfulness becomes an attitude of life. As I said, two weeks ago, we celebrated the resurrection, always a powerful time. Last week, we talked about what it is to be in Christ and have all spiritual blessings. We are the righteousness of Christ. God has blessed us in Christ. And this week, we get an attitude for life overwhelming with thankfulness and prayerfulness. I thank my God every time I remember you. All my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day even until now. And being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus' return. Jasmine, you did a perfect job of picking out a little praise chorus to talk about this passage. <clears throat> As I'm, look, as I'm singing those, those words this morning, I'm looking at this and going, I can see in you the glory of my king, and I love you with the love of the Lord. That's exactly what Paul is saying to us here and to the church in Philippi. Um, for our mud season series this year, um, last Sunday we were in Ephesians, this week we're in Philippians. We're going to be looking at the opening chapters of the epistles that were written because they have something very unique about them. They were written to specific churches in specific areas. And then they were passed around to other areas. So Galatians was written to the church in Galatia and those in that area. So they would read it, take it over to the next service, read it there. Once all the churches had read that, someone would transport that over to Ephesus for the Ephesians to look at. Then Philippi would send theirs back that way. So these letters became rotational throughout that region that we all often called Asia Minor when I was in high school and in college, that's the way it was referred to. But in that region of the world, they got this truth, and this is in the first century when church was just starting. 
And we see in these opening paragraphs how encouragement and statements of truth, statements of position in life, statements of attitude come forth so uh, succinctly. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for you, I always pray with joy because we are in partnership. We are co-workers in Christ. We are part of the family of Christ. We can share that love from different backgrounds, different states, first time to the chapel, 10th time, whatever, it doesn't really matter. God calls his people together and we get to share in that partnership wherever we might be. And that certainly is a joyous occasion. There's something about being partnered that is highly unique. And it's built, it's divine for encouragement for each of us. All my prayers are with, filled with joy because of our partnership from the first day till the last. And this, being confident. This is a calling for us in the way of thankfulness to be confident that he who began a good work in you will continue it until the day he gets back. I think sometimes we struggle with that confidence. We live in a world where we don't see a lot of it. And um, it's kind of interesting to think of that because... Yes, y'all heard it. I'm a grandpa. Our little granddaughter is 12 weeks old today. She'll be officially three months a little later this week. But it was 12 Sundays ago. She was born on a Sunday morning during the Beaver Creek worship service. So while I was preaching in Beaver Creek, that telephone right there that's recording us was in my back pocket and it started buzzing and I knew exactly what it was. And, um, I did cut the sermon short just for I knew what was happening. So it was like, okay, we got to get finished. And as soon as I said a, amen, my wife, who was sitting over in that part at Beaver Creek, stood up holding her phone going, she's born, she's born, and she's showing pictures to everybody. And that's the way church kind of ended that morning. Um, we had a great time with that fellowship. It's a blessing, it's an honor, and it's a frightening place to be a grandpa. I'm, every time I hold her, I hold her the same way. I hold her head with this hand, her bottom in this hand, I put her feet on my stomach and she'll kick and I'll just hold her there and I always want her to know how much I love her and I'll tell her that. And then I think, oh my gosh, what's this world going to be like when you get older? And I'm going, I don't know that I have a lot of confidence in our world. Here's a blessing for each one of us holding grandchildren, holding our own children, holding ourselves and our friends, our spouses and our families, we can have confidence that the world will not overcome what Christ is doing. There may be times of pain and despair, but we have confidence that he who began a good work in us is going to complete that regardless. We're going to see further evidence of that here in the next passage. But being confident of this, he who began a good work in you will carry it on to the day of completion until Christ returns. So when we come together in worship, we can be thankful that we share with each other. And this is not a statement meant to be um, uh, minimized in any way. We come here knowing we're not all that we're supposed to be yet. But God knows what he's made us for, and he is constantly growing us that way. There was a statement one time I heard on a television program years ago where a person was asked the question, how are you doing today? And the answer was kind of different. Better than some and worse than others. And I think sometimes we take on that kind of attitude in life. Well, maybe I'm a little better off than some, but worse than others. That really sets up a comparison, not a confidence. We're not trying to be better than anyone or worse than anyone. We're called to be confident in the relationship we have with Christ and hold that confidence for others. Yes, God is not finished with you yet. He's not finished with me yet. We get to walk down this path together, and that's a great joy in times of doubt and trial and tribulation. But we can have that confidence that he who began that good work will carry it on to completion, giving thanks and living in prayerfulness because we can partner together that way. Then we look on at this next little section. I thank my God every time I remember you, and it's right for us to feel this way about each other. Since we have each other in our hearts, 
For whether I'm in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. And God can testify how I long to be with you and share the affection of Christ Jesus. I love this passage because this helps us in that realm of confidence. When Paul wrote the epistle to the Philippians, he was in prison. When he talks about being enchained, part of the imprisonment, he was literally chained to a Roman guard much of the time. How do you rejoice in that? I mean, that's not a real... I don't pray that blessing on anybody. Um, not one I want us to share a lot of. But what I see here from God's word is he's beginning to the Philippians. He's telling them, our circumstances and conditions in life do not minimize our relationship with each other or our relationship with God. I don't have to ask anybody. Has it been a couple of tough years in the past 24 months? Have we felt like we've been enchained to a virus? To laws, limitations? Should we do this? Should we not? And we're not going to get into all that. Doubts, questions. But not with our relationship with God. It's right for us to feel this way. We share each other in hearts. And whether we're in chains, whether we're defending or confirming the gospel, we all share in God's grace together. The body of Christ is a powerful organism. And we see this throughout the New Testament. The body of Christ there's one body with many members, and we're all part of that body. We have different callings, different purposes, talents, abilities, so many different aspects. But when the body rejoices, the body rejoices. When the body hurts, the body hurts. I got, a new, I got an email just this week, and I, I love, uh, Deb, if you happen to be watching this back in Oklahoma, I've got to call your name on this one because the story of your mom teaching was absolutely incredible. Um, They've hosted a, a ministry called Sister India. And they have schools in India where they are teaching and educating young girls especially. Because I even hate saying having these words come out of my mouth. In that country, women are kind of second rate. That's the way they're, they're viewed. And uh, for a young girl, if she has no parents, she's, she's destitute. But what they're doing is going in and they're teaching young girls how to have confidence and education in themselves and build stronger communities. And it's working. It's a slow process. But we're seeing how lives are changed. But the story that was told here is her mom grew up in the Midwest and always wanted to be a teacher. But she couldn't afford, her family couldn't afford for her to go to college. But there was one man in her church who saw her as a teenager and saw her as a person of potential. And as she was getting ready to go off to school, she went to her and said, I want to help you with your education. And she graduated because of the generosity of someone else. Now she's teaching in India. Beautiful picture of your mom, Deb. I love that story. We all testify how we share in this together, whether we're defending we share in our hearts. We feel this way. For we share in the grace of God. And when we hear the body like that and we rejoice with that, it just made me feel good all over to think. We've been able to pray for this ministry. And if it changes one life, if it changes 20 lives, we're going to see change in other parts of the world. Same thing is true for each one of us. Someone, we didn't get here by accident, y'all. Someone prayed for us along the way. Somebody did something for us along the way um, that got us to where we are right now. That is part of the family of God. And when one rejoices, we all rejoice. And when one hurts, we all hurt. I thank my God every time I think about you and remember you and all my prayers for you. And it's right to feel this way. I have you in my heart. Whether we're in chains or defending and confirming, all of you share in God's grace together. That is an attitude of life that produces thankfulness. And that's an attitude that God desires for us to incorporate. And this is my prayer. That your love would abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern and know 
what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ's return. Filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to the glory and praise of God our Father. We have room to grow. This is the prayer of thankfulness for each other. That your love would abound more and more. Now yesterday I had a great, great privilege of doing something I do quite a lot, lot around here in Vail and in Beaver Creek. I had a wedding right here at the Vail Chapel yesterday. So we were standing right up here on this altar. And one of the things in wedding services after the vows for the exchange of rings. I have them give me the rings. I hold the rings. I talk about the significance of the ring. And I say, now, the ring had, has had a great history, but this is its highest occasion, is a symbol right here. And there's two lessons from the rings that I share with every couple at that point in a marriage ceremony. The first lesson comes from the shape of the ring. If you have to look, you know it's a circle. <laughs> Circles are unique. There's no beginning. There's no end. It literally represents eternity, and with that brings a sense of growth and becoming. The man, the woman, the family, the person, the couple, the congregation that God desires for us to be. Always growing and abounding. The second lesson comes from the substance of the rings. Gold, silvers, platinums, some have diamonds, precious stones. All of those things have one thing uniquely in common with love. And that is they all grow more precious over time. And I told the young couple right behind me yesterday, they were young enough, I said, you may have a 50th anniversary. But so one thing's going to happen as you go down this road of life in that relationship together. There's going to come a time where you hold that person's hands and you look at them. And it's going to hit you like a sledgehammer. And you're going to go, my life has been better. Because I shared it with you. That's exactly what the Bible is teaching us right here. Here's the prayer, that your love would abound more and more and more and continue to grow. And I've got, a great, I've got a great, another great example. I love this one too. Twelve weeks old. Didn't know I could love someone instantly like that. And all of a sudden I'm thinking, not only do I love this little one, but now I get to see our son as becoming a dad. I love being a dad. Love being a grandpa, too. And I have to say, I don't know how it's possible, but I love little Avery even more today than I did 12 weeks ago. I thank my God every time I remember you. When we think on who people are, Heard a story from an evangelist years ago that really brings a truth here. Um, there was a uh, person working with the Census Bureau who was in doing work in part of New Orleans, Louisiana. And he went to this one house and he knocked on the door and the lady came to the door and he said, I'm with the Census Bureau. I'm here to find out how many people live here. And she said, sure, come on in, have a seat. Now, not many Census Bureau people get invited into a house. Uh, he, he walks in has a seat, and all of a sudden she's going, would you like some coffee? I got a cinnamon roll. If you want a cinnamon roll, we can share some of that. And they just start talking like that. And finally the man's like, well, I'm here to ask you some questions. I'm with the Census Bureau, and I need to know how many people live here. She goes, I'll be happy to tell you. There's me, and there's my husband, Joe. And we got three boys, and their names are Bill. And she goes, hold it, hold it. I just need to know how many people live here. Well, I'm telling you, I live here. My husband, Joe, lives here. We've got three sons. Bill, and, no, no. How many people live here? And she got a little persnickety and just looked at him and says, 
I am trying to tell you. I live here. I've got a husband named Joe, and he lives here. We got three boys and two daughters. And that, he goes, fine. He goes, stop. I need a number. That's all I need. How many people live here? Give me the number. And the lady looked at him in his story and said, I'm sorry. There's not a single number lives in this house. <laughs> There's eight people, but every one of them's got a name, and God knows all of them. I'll bet you that census taker will never forget that story in his life. I thank my God every time I remember you. It calls to attention the value of a person. It calls to attention the value of a relationship, an occurrence, an occasion. And it leads us into thankfulness and prayerfulness. That we'll continue to bound and more and more in love and grow more in knowledge and depth and insight so that we will be able to discern in difficulties what is best and we'll be pure and blameless in Christ Jesus and filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ so that our lives might be lived to the fullness and to the glory and the praise of God. God has called us to live in his life. He's called us those personal and unique. He's got a name for us. The Bible tells us even the hairs on our head are numbered. Now, for, for me, that's a little easier problem for God than it is for most of y'all today. But at the same time, he knows me better than I know myself. He knows each one of us. And when he thinks of us, if it's possible, and I don't know how this one works in eternity, I believe God smiles. I believe this passage tells us his heartbeat. How he, is, how he loves us, cares for us. He knows that work he started in our hearts and he knows how he's going to finish it. He knows the beginning of days. He knows the end of days and all days in between and all the days before that and all the days that will be. Filled with the righteousness, the fruit of righteousness that comes through Christ Jesus our Lord. This is why we're doing this right after Easter. We celebrate the resurrection of Christ. What a glorious day. I mean, that's the coup de grace right there. Victory over sin in the grave, back to life, risen, sitting at the right hand of God the Father. Power, glory, that's a great day. Why? So that we can live in the righteousness of Christ. So that we can have relationship with our maker. So that we can be the people God's designed us to be. Not that we exalt ourselves. Not that we're comparing all is done to the glory and to the praise of God. In thankfulness and prayerfulness. When I think about all the joy in life, when I think about all the trials in life, we can see some good, we can see some bad, we can see some struggles. But the overarching picture there is can we see in all of our life that regardless of where we are, we're rooted firmly in that relationship with our Lord and Savior. We're in his hands. We live in confidence that he is building us and growing us. We know that he is going to continue that work until he completes it. And that we will continue to grow in love and abound even more and in knowledge and depth and insight, pure and blameless through Christ Jesus, filled with the fruit of righteousness, all for the glory and the praise of God. That's my prayer and hope and blessing for each one on this second Sunday after Easter. We see ourselves as people who are in Christ because of what Christ has done. And we see ourselves as people with an attitude of thankfulness and prayerfulness because of what Christ has done for us. Pray with me this morning. Heavenly Father, how good it is to be called by name. That you know us. That you love us. And how we can thank you every time when we call to remembrance the 
lives that we've interacted with. Father, this morning, we prepare right now our hearts for a celebration of your life around the communion table. You've told us in your word that when we do this, we do it in remembrance of you. Lord, it fills your people with thankfulness when we think of you and remember you. Your body given for us, your blood shed for us. Because of you and you only, we are your people. So we pray now at this time that you would bless the bread, that you would bless the cup, that you would bless each of your people as we join together. And let us share together in humility. Let us share in love and in thankfulness. And offer prayers to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. For you, Lord Jesus, are worthy of worship. You are worthy of praise. In this day, we honor you by remembering your sacrifice. Bless your people today in communion. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm going to ask each of you, before you just stand up, we're going to come up this side. You'll take one of the wafers. You'll come around. We've got cups over here. Then you'll go back to where your seats are. Once everybody's been served, we'll eat and drink together. So let's come to the table that he's prepared. and he told them to take and eat. This now is bread of life, his body given for us. Eat of the bread of life. And then after the meal, the cup was prepared. And Jesus said, no longer is this the cup of the old covenant. It's now the cup of the new covenant. This cup represents the blood of Christ shed for us for the remission of sins. Not once a year, but for all eternity. And when all the disciples had been served, he told each one to take and drink of the cup of life. And Lord Jesus, your people thank you and praise you and give you honor today. For the blessing of communion, for the blessing of fellowship, for the blessing of being called by your name. We give you praise this day. And we ask now that you send us from here into this world that we might show more of your love and grace, especially to those who need it most. Let our hearts be thankful. Let our minds be prayerful. Let us be led by your spirit and may all things bring honor and glory to you. We ask this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, I want to thank you for being here with us today. And um, hopefully you've had a chance to fill out that sheet if you would please drop it. The offering plate is right back there. So as we leave, if you'll just drop that in there, that would be wonderful. If you'd like to make a contribution, of course, you're always welcome to do so. But it's been a joy worshiping with you today. And... Um, did anybody drive? Y'all walked, right? Yeah. Did y'all drive by chance? Are you parked over here? No. Okay. I was going to give you some great news. If you are, you can leave your car here uh, until 3 o'clock. Mm -hmm. If you can find a place to eat that's open, you're welcome to go have some lunch. Uh, that's going to be tough today because the mountain does close. Oh, in just about four and a half hours from now, if anybody's counting. Um, but there's not much going on in town right now. But I want to thank you for making today special. Like I said, there's always something special about real life people in here. 
even those who are going to watch with us later, that's great as well. I give thanks every time I think about you. There's something special about who you are and who we are, and I'm thankful to our God for bringing us together. I pray now that God, our Heavenly Father, will bless you and keep you. I pray that he will make his face to smile upon you. And I pray that he will lead us in the paths of his righteousness for his honor and glory. Letting us, his people, go from here today to be encouraged and renewed. To be those who will share truth and live truth for the honor and glory of Christ Jesus. May his Holy Spirit now guard your hearts and guide your steps into the days ahead. I pray this blessing upon you in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. And amen. God's blessings on you. Thank you for being with us. And we'll make our way outside. We're dismissed.